get a truck, they said. It would be fun, they said. Ah, oh God, it's dark. So dark, so close to. I really need to get a freaking. Head southwest toward Pennsylvania 233 North. Then turn left onto Pennsylvania 233 lens. South. Okay, hold on. Turn left hold onto on. Pennsylvania We're, we're going to give you guys south. light here as soon as I figure out exactly where I'm going. I did get far enough south before I needed gas to save 20 cents a gallon. So that's pretty freaking cool. Where am I going? Let me back on 81. I bet they better not be taking me back to traffic. I was making great time. Great time. Oh God. Oh God. Phone just fell. Hold on. Let's see if I can see anything. It's probably not the smartest since I'm in traffic. But all right, guys. Ah. Uh, oh God. Rumble strips. Oh God. The disaster out of here. I don't know if you guys can see that disaster. One lane. Just lost an hour. I was making great time. Now I'm going to have to wait to talk to you guys because there's rumble strips. Oh, it's opening back up. Okay, okay. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Super Bass Bros. Uh, it is officially 2021 20, tournament season for this guy. That's right. We're going to our first tournament. And my dumbass is driving six and a half hours away to Smith Mountain Lake in Virginia to fish a BFL in the Piedmont Division. Yeah, the Piedmont, I'm, I'm from the Northeast. But we're going to the Piedmont Division, fish BFL as a co-angler. And uh, the reason why we're doing this, the reason why we're, the reason why I'm doing this, is because in two weeks, we are taking a five, six, five or six day trip back down to Smith Mountain Lake to fish the Big Bass Tour with a chance to win a brand new nitro boat. This is going to be best five fish, 14 inch minimum length requirement. Tournaments tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, 7 a.m. launch. I got to work at three today. I got a six and a half hour drive. I had to get everything ready. Still, I got most of it ready Thursday night. I had to get everything ready, pack, start to drive down. ETA right now is 12:30. Sleeping in the truck. I'm gonna meet him at the state park. I already talked to him. Got to meet him at 5:30. So my goal is to drive until midnight, pull over, sleep for four, four and a half hours, drive the last hour, 45 minutes to an hour in the morning to the state park, meet him, put everything in his boat, go win a lot of money, and of course, we are in Gesso fashion. We are boat 159. I'm driving home tomorrow night. I would have really liked to have an early flight. Like first flight, 7 a.m. launch, three o'clock check-in. Would have been fine with me. But either way, guys, it's gonna be a good time. So stay tuned, keep watching. This video is about to get really interesting. I hope things are gonna to happen tomorrow, guys. Things are gonna happen, so don't click off. Don't do it. Do not click off. Keep watching till the end. I need those hours for monetization, guys. Even walk away. I don't care if you watch it. Just don't click off the video. All right. See you guys in the morning. Peace. All right. Update, guys. Uh, made it to the rest area. About an hour away from where I am meeting my boater in the morning. We are meeting at uh, State Park as a launch up from where we actually have to go weigh in at to try to avoid the crowds. So. Meeting him there at 5.30 in the morning. It is 12.30 right now. I found the closest, non-sketchiest rest area off of 81 so that I wasn't at a rest area sleeping in my truck somewhere in the sticks. I'm gonna set my alarm for four. It gives me three and a half hours of sleep. I already got monsters and stuff in the car. Uh, I got waters, a lunch for tomorrow, so we're good there. Don't really have to stop. I would like to find a Duncan, but so all right guys that's uh that's been the trip down so far it's five and a half hours got an hour left hopefully gonna whack them up tomorrow all right guys i will see you in the morning at the launch hopefully i'm gonna go out tomorrow and whack some big ones with all this effort fingers crossed Let's see what happens i'm gonna get three and a half hours of sleep
Alright guys, so I don't know if you could really hear him in this clip, um, that's why I'm doing this voiceover, but as we're pulling in this pocket, he turns and looks at me and says, I've got some bedfish back here. And as a co-hangler, especially in a BFL, those are the words that you fear hearing the most. I kind of dealt with this the whole day where he would power pull down, fish for a better, and I would sit in the back of the boat and cast at the same bank and make the same cast probably a thousand times. Fishing no structure, maybe a 5% chance of catching a fish that might swim around in there. There's no grass, no rock. Like It was literally the worst experience of my life. That's why I kind of did this hyper scene where I fast forward through everything because I wanted to show you guys how brutal these BFLs can be if it ends up being a spawn tournament. Oh. Hey. That's a pretty nice one. Right, saying he's a, he's full of shit. I'll take that. I'll take five of these. All day, the way practice is bad. Thanks, buddy. For letting me in. Indulge this. I hate doing this to you, but. No, you're good. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I would. You gotta do what you gotta do to catch fish, man. Alright, so as you guys just heard, uh, my boater wasn't a bad yeah, guy. So. It's, he apologized countless times throughout the day for backboating me and uh, sticking me in the back of the boat while he bed fishes. And like I told him in the video, it's not his fault. It, I, I mean, if I was boating in a BFL and I had bed fish, I would do the same thing. You're fishing, you're not fishing against each other, but you're not fishing with each other. So you got to do whatever you have to do to catch fish. Whatever you think your best chances of catching and checking catching fish are is what you're gonna have to do it's just bad luck and i don't think that they should have bfls in the time of year where you could possibly get stuck with a guy that's going to be bed fishing just because it's such a horrendous time for the co-angler especially somebody like me who already knows how to bed fish you see in the next part of the video he kind of goes through it's hard to hear um but he takes me lets me come up to the front of the boat and kind of explains to me what he's doing, um, what he's looking for, how he's catching them. You see the chunk in the pool? Yeah. See this branch that comes off right here? Mm-hmm. You go, you see those little white shells? And see where this branch goes? You can see the shells all along it? That's oh, where, okay. That's where the bed is. Basically, he's just looking for light spots with shells. I fished SML before during the spawn in college, and he's looking for just light patches in the water and then the water is so clear especially up shallow you can see the shells from them kicking the dirt away with their tails and everything else and it's pretty much a dead giveaway when you see the shells or the white rocks that um there's a bed there there used to be a bed there then you kind of just look for the fish on it to see see how they act blah 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 and most of the times if you get them when they're on top of the bed you can catch them like he caught that one uh just like a senko Okay. Just real quick, this part of the video here, my boater asked me, um, as you guys heard, he asked me what I'm throwing, and uh, he's working on the second fish on the bed there, and he lets me throw in front of the boat at the end of this tree, which is uh, very nice, especially for a boater to do to let your co-angler cast. Just a little more validation that it wasn't anything my boater was doing wrong. I wasn't mad at him by any means. It was just, like I said, bad, a bad tournament bad scenario but the guy was real cool that I got paired with again and you'll see what happens here oh there's one. Oh, he's got me wrapped in the tree he's still on there though I can feel him pulling As you can see in this part of the video here, I get caught, I actually catch a fish from the end of the tree that he tells me to cast that, and the fish wraps me around a branch, and he actually stops what he's doing and goes out to the branch to help me try and get the fish in the boat, which is uh, another thing he, he didn't have to do that. I know a lot of boaters would have said tough shit, and 
I would have had to break it off or try to work them out myself. So just another little validation of uh, how good of a guy he was. Oh, he came off. Oh, I don't know if he's going to keep. Thanks. Huh? Hey, <laughs> I got a bite on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I keep my mouth shut for now. <laughs> Thanks for that. Measure board right there. There. He's long, but I don't know if he'll go. Yeah, 13 and a half. That sucks. Yeah, 13 and a half. You got a, was that a wacky sinker? Yeah. Oh! I just missed one. I was I was twitching it and I brought it up to the surface and he swam up to it and turned away when he saw the boat. Damn it! Why am I pinching? What's pinching like that? Yeah. See, that looks like he touches right there. But am I doing it the right way? I don't. That that's real close. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. That was worth the wait. <laughs> of course, right when I opened my uh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh no, I'm not going to get the nut. <laughs> Oh, there's one on it. Yeah. <clears throat> that might be a keeper too if you want to check him out. He looked pretty big. He was he was off like on that little lip. And when you drove by he turned around and swam up and I saw him. Yeah, he was like back a little bit further.
Oh, I just missed one. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, I pitched it in that back corner there and I felt pump. And I picked up, but I didn't feel anything. And then I saw my line shooting underneath the dock. And by the time I caught up with him, I felt it pretty much come out of his mouth. Got him that time. <laughs> Maybe this is the male and the female is like a two pounder. <laughs> Alright guys, so in this part of the video I figured I'd take a second to um, kind of just show a mistake that I think my boater made. As you just heard us talking about, he uh, he's obviously fishing for two fish on a bed, the male and the female. Um, I never actually got a good look at the fish, I could see it a little bit, but he claimed that they were both four pounders and he gets stuck on the bed. Something that the fish made the bed out of or draw something. He's stuck on the bed somehow. Uh, in this situation, he should have stayed back instead of going in. Broke off the lure and cast it back in. Especially because he could still see the fish. He didn't spook him too bad. But uh, he opts to go in all the way in. Real down to the bed, essentially. And then um, he ends up pretty much breaking it off anyway. So... Then we spend another probably 20, 30 minutes while he tries to get these fish to bite. And be quite honest, guys, something like that, if you go in on top of them like that and spook them that bad, they're not going to bite for at least a very long time. So I just figured I'd explain that a little bit. It's uh, definitely something if you're fishing a tournament and you're really trying to catch those fish on a bed, you're going to want to break off in that situation and cast back in with something else tied on. Never go into the bed. It's just, it makes them that much harder to catch. No. <laughs> You still see both your fish under there? Huh? You still see both your fish under there? Yeah. Like a three and a half pounder just like cruised right by me. Oh yeah. I mean they're not just cruising not on a bed or nothing. That's what's that? I think coming in. Yeah. That's what it seemed like. He was just swimming around. Yeah.
Jamie Newton, Falls Church, Virginia. Fishing on the boater side. You got three in his bag. I'm good. How are you, man? Seven pounds, one ounce. Seven, one. Thank you, my friend. All right, guys. So, uh, as you saw, the fishing really sucked. Yeah. Got backboated a little bit. I guess that's what happens. That's a chance you take when you uh, when you become a co-angler. Don't get me wrong, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about it a little bit more, but uh, it had nothing to do with my, my boater. Not his fault. If I was in his position, I would probably do the same thing. He's just trying to catch fish, catch a check. Same thing as every boater out there. Uh, so, as you guys can tell, my mic was uh, starting to get a little wonky here at the end of this video. I actually ended up having to buy a new one, but um, that's pretty much all for this video, guys. I just went on to talk about how much being a co-angler sucked when I had my own boat, and how I already signed up for a couple, linked for a couple this year, or I would never be fishing any co-tournaments ever again. So I do have some more videos coming out as me as uh, fishing some tournaments as a co-angler a little bit closer to home in the Northeast Division. But besides that, like I said, I just kind of talked about, uh, I thought it was going to be a pre-spawn tournament, an easy co-tournament where like pre-spawn fish are kind of everywhere. So I'd be able to cast, I wouldn't be able to get back boated. And I don't necessarily think it was a spawning tournament. Um, there was some high weights on the coast side. I think that some fish moved up, but I don't think it was the big wave with all the big fish that were pushing up. I don't think the guy who won it caught him spawning. I'm not exactly sure. I never looked into it. But uh, I think that's just what my boater chose to do. He ended up catching three fish for seven pounds, as you saw. So obviously uh, wasn't on the winning spawning fish, if anything. But uh, yeah, that's it. Enjoy. On my way home, I decided to take a nice ride over to the, the blue parkway to at least get some scenic views out of my uh my trip down there for pretty much not to catch one keeper bass so enjoy the end b-roll if you stuck around this long thank you guys i appreciate it um stick around we're gonna be popping videos out a lot more than we have been um a lot of coves we got some trips coming up um just a ton of stuff ton of videos same thing as always so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like this video even though i didn't catch any keepers again give it a thumbs up uh share it with your friends we're so close to hitting a thousand and again if you were around this long thank you guys i appreciate the view and we will catch you guys on the next episode of the super bass bros thanks for watching I guess this is why you're not really supposed to be up here when it gets real foggy because it just rolls in like crazy. Look at that blowing across the top of this hill. That's nuts. Yep, definitely time for me to get down. That fog is rolling through. across you can see it behind my hand but yeah it's just blowing the fog up across the top of this mountain this is insane such a cool spot this whole side is just complete fog it's so windy you guys probably can't hear a thing all right i guess it's time to go home stop with the adventure and get off the, the top of the top of this ridge before I get blown off because I haven't seen anybody in a pretty long time <laughs>